had the, uh, uh, the, the bosonic theory and the fermionic theory of the world sheet of the string. Um, we discussed the coasts and their supersymmetric partners. Okay? Uh, so we looked at the superinformal field theory of, uh, uh, of uh, the coasts and the supercoasts. We found the central charge of that supersymmetrized theory and found that that would lead to a critical dimension of 10. You remember the BC system had, super, had central charge minus 26, but the BC plus beta gamma system had central charge uh, minus 15, which led to a dimension of 10, because each scalar boson dimension comes with a fermion, so each dimension has central charge 3 bit. Okay? Uh, and now, now what we're going to try to do in this class and the next so on Friday is try to complete at least the, uh, the basic structure of the of string. And so first I'm going to focus on the matter, and then we'll turn to the coast. Okay? Now what do I mean by complete the basic structure of string theory? I mean, once, you, once, once I've given you the world sheet, the theory on the world sheet of the string, that doesn't yet specify, you know, once I've given you the Lagrangian, that doesn't yet specify the theory. Because I have to tell you what sectors we're keeping in terms of the firm. We already saw that in the, in the one toy example we worked out in great detail of the bosonization of two, two fermions. We saw that uh, these two fermions were equal, equivalent to the bosons, but only with some particular with a particular rule on, on the spectrum. Okay? And uh, um, so what, what we have to now discover is what the allowed rules of the spectrum. Okay? And uh, this is what we're going to try to do. Uh, in this so, the first thing I'm going to do is to remind you of uh, our construction of vertex operators for the fermions. Everything non-trivial has to do with the fermions. Okay, the bosons are just fine. Everything non-trivial has to do with the fermions. And let me remind you that we had uh, um, psi was bosonized by d to the power i h. Okay, so let's, let's be a little clear. Now we know that we have 10 directions in space. Okay? Let's take these 10 directions and pair them up arbitrarily in the complex space. So suppose 1, 2 is one, one pair, 3, 4 is another, and so on. It's clear we will get 5 such complex spaces. Okay? We'll bosonize each pair. Okay? So we will have psi A is equal to pi by A, I A J. And psi bar a, remember bar is different from tilde, it's just psi 1 plus i psi 2 by square root 2, psi 1 minus i psi 2 by square root 2, was equal to bar minus i a. Uh, and each of the ha is obeyed, um, ha of z times ha of 0 is the minus log. Since psi was equal to pi h a. Okay? And you can build in the Nebuchadnezzar sure sector, you can build all operators by acting with size and derivatives of size on the vacuum. You remember we went through the state operator map, we figured out that the vacuum in the Nebuchadnezzar sure sector was you know, just identity, the identity operator, okay? And uh, um, it's the pi h a was psi, and all, all, all vertex operators in the sector build up products of psi. So, but you remember that in the Ramond sector, for any 
all these directions, the vacuum was equal to pi h a by 2 to the power x. Lowest energy state. All other operators were obtained by acting on the vacuum by size and its products and derivatives. So that leaves it leaves this uh, so what the size is e to the pi h a, which means that every state in the Ramon sector has half integer weights in h. Okay. Now we are going to try to look for Lorentz invariant string theory. So we're not going to distinguish what we do in the one two directions, the three four directions, the five six directions. We do something in the one two direction. We do the same in three four five six. Did we 
restarting the posterization of the posts? Uh, yeah. Uh, give me a minute. Should we study that now? Give me one minute just to decide whether we should do the hosts first. This will be the first. Because they're not playing. Just first, just first. Proceed with this, and I'll tell you the piece of information we need for the coarse vertex operators when we come to it, and then we'll discuss that later. Okay, let, 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 let's simply start. Let's, let's do that. Okay, fine. Um, Suppose we were working in light code. Suppose we were working in the light code, in light code quantization. Okay? So we had only four of these, effectively the number of oscillators, instead of being ten, would be eight. I think this is the cleanest way to do this discussion. Then when we come back to look at the ghosts, we'll see how we can deal with the ten and the ghosts will cancel the extra two. Okay, so for now we just imagine that we have just four of these. Okay, so these H is A is equal to one. Okay? Imagine we're doing light code, we're doing light code quantization. I'll come back and explain how it works. But then there's a long discussion we have to go through for bosonization of the hosts and all. Without that, that will be interesting. Okay, so this is just one to four. Okay, excellent. Okay, um, uh, uh, this is important for the following reason. Had we, doing a, had we been doing A is equal to one to five, then in the Ramon sector, the uh, fermion number would be neither plus one nor minus one, but would be some puppet digit. The point is that the ghost also contributes to the bar game. Okay, so just let's do light count for a moment. Forget about that. Then we've got a sum of four half integers. That's an integer, but it could be ordered. Okay, so those are the four choices that we have. On the left we have, uh, we're working in either the NS sector or the Roman sector. The fermion number is plus one or minus one. On the right, again, we're working in the NS sector, the non sector, the fermion numbers are the plus one or minus one. Okay? Now, uh, we follow Polchinski and keep the following labels. We will label state by alpha x, alpha theta x. Alpha is equal to 1 in the Ramon sector. And is equal to zero in the NSA. 
it's the sum of these MAs. Okay? And it's equal to 1 or 0 depending on whether the sum of MAs is 1 mod 2 or 0 mod 2. Okay? And alpha tilde and f tilde are the same quantities for the right. Okay? So these these are the four choices that lead to the 16 centers. Is this clear? such that the vertex operators have well-defined coefficients. Okay? So when you take, you've got some insertions of vertex operators, you take one vertex operator around the other, you bring it back to the same point, you sh should get an unambiguous answer. It should be a function, not some branched cover or something. Yeah. Okay? That is like one of the central principles that will help us uh, track down what are the consistent choices that we can make in this game. Is this clear? So the thing we're going to try to discover is what we get when we take and what phase we get when we take an operator in one of these sectors around an operator in the number one of these sectors. Okay? So suppose we've got well, the first operator which is an, uh, has an alpha 1, f1, and alpha 2 and f2. Sorry, uh, uh, alpha tilde 1 and f2. Second operator has an alpha 2. F2, alpha tilde uh, 2, and F tilde. Question, when we take 1 around 2, what is the phase? Is this clear? Okay, so we proceed as we always have. Okay, suppose, now it's clear that the phase is going to be a product of some phase in the left sector and another phase in the right sector. Okay. So let's do it sector by sector. Let's first just compute the phase from the left moving part, then we'll compute the phase from the right moving part, and then we'll take the product of the phases. Okay? So, suppose on the left moving sector, the first guy was e to the power i m a m1 a j. These m1s contain in it the information of you know, alpha 1 and f. And the second guy is e to the power i m2 a okay so as we always do we just work out the op so what do we get this is the conformal normal order is pi m a h a uh, m1 a e to the pi m something. Now what is that something? That something is e to the power minus m1 a m2 a h h somewhere. Minus because there was an i square. Except 
uh, except that that is probably not possible because you've got four. You see, one common teacher would be if it was in uh, um, uh, in Ramon Ramon. Yeah, but then you have four guys. It would be Ramon Ramon in one, and Edison has no three others. No, no, no. It's uh, Lorenz in there. So whatever choice you're making, you make it in all A's. Oh, okay. This is the same reason that the whole thing, yeah. yeah. What? Is it always an integer? No, because you can have Ramon and uh, uh, let the little. Oh, you're yeah. saying what? No, no, oh. Uh. Yeah, maybe. We just have a two just. just. and then we'll The answer is that if we are in the Ramon Ramon sector, the phase is F1 alpha, well, in every, in every sector, F1 alpha 2 minus F2 alpha. That's the thing. Okay? First, let's take a couple of examples and then let's write out the steps. Okay. So let's work in the Ramon Ramon sector. And let's be, let's look at half, 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 half. Okay, so the first guy is half, 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 half. The second guy is half, half, half. Okay? So let's first look at, well, all of these have alphas equal 1. Because they're both Ramon. Okay? So the claim is that the phase is F1 minus F2. Now in this case, 
F1 <coughs> is 2, F2 is 2, F1 minus F2 is 0. So it should be that this guy will have phase, this guy will have net phase uh, uh, 0, which is obviously true, because 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, which is an integer. Is this right? Said to the power integer, which is no reason. So if you flip one of the signs, you still get a same formula number, right? No, we don't get the same formula. So if we flip one of the signs, suppose we get this, then F1 is equal to 2. F2 is equal to 1. Because the Fabian number is the sum of these. Oh, I see. Right? So in this case, what we will get is my, is 1 into 2 minus 1, which is 1. And this works out right. You see, because now, as we just checked, now in response to Ronald's question, we get a half integer, z to the power half integer. Okay. Now let's see. Now let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can systematically um, what is the main point? Suppose I take, let me start with, with let me start with uh, one of these examples. Let's say I start with this example. Okay? And I increase the net fermion number. I increase the net fermion number of this object by an odd integer. That net fermion number is the sum of ends, but each end is multiplying half, 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 half. So you see that what you will be doing is increasing the, the phase by the increase in fermion number times half. You see this? Special case that this is L fixed, but I change this one. Okay. What is the phase? The change in phase is see what what was the phase? It was M1A, M2A. I'm holding M1A fix, so it's just M1A times change in M2A. But each of the M1A is half. So I'm increasing the phase by half times change in the sum of M2A. But that's increasing the phase by half times fermion number of the second game. So it's clear that if we change the fermion number of this guy by an odd integer, that will change the phase by minus one. On the other hand, if we leave this guy fixed and change the fermion number of this guy by an even integer, that will not change the phase. Okay? Now, let us take a more general, um, a more general case. You see, what I'm going to do uh, once again is keep one of these fixed and change the other one. Okay, just to show you that this rule, this, this rule is correct. We've almost proved this, except that we, we kept this fixed at a very special value. We start with an arbitrary guy for this, and we, you know, we establish this, this changing rule that would that would establish what we wanted to show. Okay, so suppose I start with this guy, which is m1, m2, m3, m4. Each of these is half integer. I don't know what it is. I don't don't say what it is. Okay, and I change m2s by some amount. Okay. I change M2 is by uh, delta M, delta M1, delta M2, delta M3, delta M4. Okay, so what is the net change in phase? Okay, the net change in phase is delta M1, times M1, plus delta M2, times M2, plus delta M3, times M3, plus delta M4, times M4. Okay? Now let's just take some random examples. 
examples of M1, M2, M3, M4, just to see how this works. So suppose M1 was half, M2 was minus half, M3 was 3 by 2, M4 was 5 by 2. You're quite right doing this. So what do we get? We're getting uh, delta half. Everything is by half. Then we get delta M1 plus delta M2 minus delta M2 plus delta M3 plus 3 plus delta M4 times 5. Changes in M can only be by integers. Because we're always looking at everything that's half integer. So changes in M are, uh, are uh, always integers. So 3 delta M is the same as half delta M. It is the same as 1 delta M. So that's delta M. 5 delta M is the same as delta M. And minus delta M2 is the same as delta M. So you see it's the same root. Okay, there's some fancy way of saying this. There's some fancy way of arguing this. But you see by hand that it's totally Do You see? What is the main point? The main point is <coughs> that if I take one M, one set of M's and keep them fixed, and I change, take the other sets of M's, it looks like you're getting a totally random combinations of delta M's. But the delta M's are irrelevant. Irrelevant mod 2. So it's up to that mod 2 irrelevance, it's the same as just changing the fermion. So if I keep any one of these guys fixed and change the other one, that changes the phase by minus 1. If we change the fermion number by an odd number, changes the phase, doesn't change the phase, but changes the fermion number by an even number. And from there it follows that this rule is true and zero. Okay, so in the Ramon sector, we get the phase plus one if the two fermion numbers are equal to mod two, and minus one if the two fermion numbers are different mod two. Isn't it f one alpha one minus f two alpha two? Suppose that two. Yeah, uh, uh, that in the Ramon sector would give you the same answer, but this rule is really true in all sectors. You see, this is a bit of an overkill because for the Ramon sector, alpha one and alpha two are just one. It's just F1 minus. But I have to, sh I have to now go sector by sector to check that this rule is correct. We check this rule is true in the one sector, what you said in this would be the same. But it will not be true in the other sectors. I'm going to go through that. And NSR sector is the key. Okay? Any questions or comments? The next, of course, as uh, Lovely pointed out, in the NSNS sector we had no phases. That's trivial in this rule because the two alphas are zero. Okay, so that's so the move. all we have to, all we have left to uh, uh, analyze is the NSR sectors. Okay, so suppose the first sector was the NS sector. Let's say alpha one was in the NS sector. So once again we've got Z to the power M1, M2, we need a better notation. I've got M and N, okay? M1, N1 plus M2, N2 plus M3, N3 plus M4, N4. And let us suppose that N was NS. Was in the wrong sector. 
does, that it's F1. Your rule not be even have said F2. Okay? So we want to check whether it's true that the phase here is F1. The fermion number, the fermion number in the NS sector. But this is obviously true. Why is it obviously true? The simplest NS sector vertex operator. Just identity. This is 0, 0, 0, 0. There, of course, that times Uh, maybe the phase on the left hand side and the right hand side will cancel and so on uh, well, maybe, maybe that's possible but uh, 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 but even that statement is sort of clear because suppose you had on the left hand side you had Romand even for me or number with Romand or for me and then on the right hand side you had NS, NS. Clearly, this is not a law. Okay? So, of all the 16 possible sectors in the theory, you can't have them all at the same time. You can only at the same time have those that respect mutual locality. Such that the phases of operators, which you go one, take one or the other, are, um, uh, are all plus one. Okay? So, now what we're going to do is to try to systematically analyze. What these, uh, what these, the, the solutions to this? We want to find all the solutions to this problem of mutual locality. All the subsets, okay? All the subsets that are mutually local uh, with each other. Okay. Um, well, so let us start. It does have the two qualitatively different kinds of solutions. Those solutions which have fermions in it, it's space time. And those that don't. Now, as we will see as we go along, or maybe it's already clear to some of them. Uh, let me say the book of the explain part. Uh, you might remember that in the Ramon sector, quantization gave us Dirac's equation. 
in space time. Because there was a zero mode of the fermions in the Raman sector. And the quantization of that zero mode gave us the gamma matrices. So, but that happened in the left, it also happened in the right. So, if you have product of gamma matrix with gamma matrix, you don't get a spin. But if you have one gamma matrix on the other side, nothing, you get a spin. So, maybe it's already clear to you, and we'll see this in much more detail as we go along, that space time fermions are associated with modes in which one side is on the Ramon and the other side is on the X. Whereas space time bosons are associated with, with the uh, modes which on both sides are either N S or both sides are Ramon. Okay? So, let us first. Um, oh, and there's one more thing that we. Uh, um, uh, there's, there's one more thing, of course, that, that, that has to, sorry, there's one more constraint that has to work. We can't have an arbitrary set of sectors because the, sec the sectors that we retain have to be closed under the operator. So we've got an operator, we take another operator. If something appears in the OP of these two operators, we can't project that. We're being consistent. Okay? Now, what is the role when we have we've got something which is like alpha 1, x1, alpha 2, x2, no, alpha 1, tilde x1. And you take the OP with that, the 2, alpha 2, x2, alpha 2, tilde x2. Oh, sorry, one simulation. So like, in this case, like, if you shift to uh, like 1 to 2, like, it's, the phase is just uh, m1 a times m2, right? And if you shift, I, I didn't understand. Say that again. The uh, the phase is just z to the power m1 a m2 a, right? Yeah. And if you shift the two states, then the phase remains same. But in this f1 alpha 1 minus f2 alpha 2. Sorry, this, can, can you tell me which which say, I don't want to take an example. No, no. Just general. In general, yeah. So f1 alpha 2 minus f2 alpha 1. If you shift one and two, that's it. But here it's not. Yeah, it doesn't matter because this whole thing is only modulo 2. One and minus one are treated as the same. See, this quantity here, this 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 quantity here, if it's either zero, if it's zero, see what is this quantity measuring? This quantity is measuring the uh, phase that you get, so so the claim is that the phase that you get is that the OP is this times F1 alpha 2 minus F2 alpha 1 alpha 2. Okay? So e to the power i pi uh, is same as e to the power minus i pi. It doesn't matter. So we only count it whether the phase is half integer or integer. Okay, thank you. Okay, but good question. Uh, so let's, uh, where were we? Where, uh -huh. So the OP. So now suppose we take this, we take the OP of an operator in this sector and another operator in this sector. Can you tell me what sector we will end up in? So let's see. Let's first look at alpha. Again, left and right and couple. So let's do alpha 1 x 1 with alpha 2 x 2. Exactly. This just goes to alpha 1 plus alpha 2, 1 plus alpha 2. Why is this true? That's just conservation of like charge. Right? It's pi h1 that is pi h2 grade pi h1 plus h2. Time's a factor. Conservation of del and the current is del <coughs> yeah? And why is this true? Well, this is just the statement that if you have two operators in the wrong sector, the sum of two half integers is an integer. Whereas the sum of an integer of the half integer is half integer. This fact. Again, everything here is measured mod 2. So if you have 1 plus 1, that's 2, which is the counter is 0. You know, that's the same one. Is this clear? Okay? So whatever truncation you have in your sectors has to respect this. So if you've got something here and something else there, then there's some according to this rule, according to the OP rule, also has to exist. Okay? 
let me hear not again. Okay. Uh, okay, RHS is typically equal to 1 and 2. LHS is actually not. Which, which RHS and which LHS? In that OP, it's 1 and 2 on LHS. Just labels. 1 and 2 to flip. Ah, if you, can, if you flip. But one and, on RHS, there, you can flip 1 and 2. It's mechanical, right? In 1 and 2. It's the same thing. Here, in this, yes. in this, 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 this thing? Yes. But on LHS, you can't flip 1 and 2. signs in all of these that these OPs all get right. Okay? Which allows which allows this to be a fermion. Which allows all of these to be anti-commuting. Was that your question? Okay. Maybe I have not answered the question. I think that M is from labels. One and two. Okay? okay let, let's address it here since it's simple. This is a particular set of labels. Now what is the second thing you want to check? Suppose, Suppose I explain these two. One and two. Just the one and two. Yeah, so I have e to the power i h of z2 minus h e to the power i h of z1. Okay, then this, if it's true, will be equal to 1 over z2. It's not z12. And these things are not equal to each other because they're perfect. They become a minus sign as they go to. Was this your question? Okay, we can talk about that. These signs are very confusing. And they're connected to something I haven't told you about in class called a cosine. Which I'll tell you about maybe outside class. Okay, some, some support. But it all works out, as we see. Yeah, just one by z12 into normal order, mm -hmm. take yeah, into normal order, you start yes. But so if you flip these two, one to normal order, also flip and that gets a minus. That's right. But let me now. You see, the normal order is not either identity, which in this case is the linear order, or something of, of evaluated at the point Z2. Okay. Okay, then you have to tailor expand one and so on. Do it again. The, the, the easiest way actually would be to do the tailor, if you are really interested in this, do the, tailor, uh, do the OP such that the operator is inserted at the midpoint. Okay, that, that would make it clearer. That's an exact Okay, but for instance, like, if we just take the leading order terms as identity. Okay, uh, otherwise, you have to do it more carefully by tailoring. The usual thing, right? I mean, when we do a TTOP, it doesn't look symmetrical. Mm. But, but it is because, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. It's the, that, that, that thing just is the usual. Okay, um, any questions? Any further questions? Great. So, we have this nice rule for what set, what mu you know, the mutual locality of sector and the closure of the OP. Now I want to try to find all solutions to this problem. So let me first look. Um, there is one more thing that I have to tell you that maybe is obvious to you. Uh, let me tell you and I'll explain why it's obvious. Apart from these two rules, we will also want the one loop partition function of our world sheet partition function to be modulated. And it is impossible for um, it is impossible to have a modular invariant. Um, it's impossible to have a modular invariant partition function um, unless 
you have at least one left-moving Ramon sector and one right-moving Ramon sector. Let me quickly explain that to you. We're going to understand all of this in great formulas, hopefully by the end of this class. But first, just pictures. You remember that the NS sector was anti-periodic on the curves. So if you've got a sector like this, it's impossible for this to be moduli like that. Because this cycle is periodic. You see, what is modular invariance? Modular invariance is a statement that you can choose any cycles of your torus. There's no God-given basis for, for cycles. You choose this and this, this and this, or any cycle of your this is space of torus, tor and you should get the same rule. So if your rule is I'm only going to keep anti-periodic, anti-periodic, it makes no sense. Because if this cycle is anti-periodic, and this cycle is anti-periodic, then this cycle is periodic. So somebody who decided to choose this and this as his basis of cycles will always have at least one cycle, will have one cycle that is periodic. So it's impossible to build a modular invariant partition function in which the rule is that you can anti-periodicity in both cycles.
say that the rate of death in the world exists. There's one more thing that I haven't told you about. Let, let me start telling you about it. Okay. You see, if you've got, um, uh, if you've got some set, something on the left and something on the right, it could be that this thing in the physical spectrum is completely empty. Okay. Now, how could this work? You see, you remember that in uh, string theory. We, when we uh, when we sort of the physical spectrum, let's say light cone gauge, um, all of the constraints except one were solving for the oscillators, for the oscillators of the other two directions in terms of the remaining <coughs> 24 for the bosonic or 8 for the fermionic oscillators. However, there was one constraint that wasn't of this one. Okay? In the bosonic string, we have the condition that alpha prime some number L0, you see, was equal to, basically this was the condition that L0 was equal to 1 and L0 power was equal to 1. Okay? Now L0 got contributions from the 0 mode sector. So it's from alpha prime by, by carbon prime exactly. Right. Okay? Plus some over oscillator. Both these were in particular equal to each other. So once again you have some alpha prime p squared by 4 plus n tilde. Okay? So that in particular when you can see it gave us a condition that n was equal to n tilde. This was something we call the level matching condition. Okay? So now what we need to do is to work this thing out in detail for the superstring. Okay. Um, we need to work this thing out in detail for the superstring. And you see that it doesn't look entirely trivial. Okay? Because um, because roughly speaking, okay, when you've got modes in the Roman sector, the fermions are half, have half integer energies. And, oh, sorry. Uh, when we when we the canonical quantization, the ones in the Roman sector, the, the modes are integer spaced. Whereas in the NS sector, the modes are half integer spaced. Okay? So the analog of this thing, it's not totally clear that it can be that it can be solved. Okay. But to explain this to you in detail, I need to Okay, I'm going to give you a rule. I'm going to give you a rule, which I'll justify hopefully by the end of this class when we start talking about the costs. Okay, sorry, I tried to do this without the costs. It's not working. I'm going to give you one rule for. I'm going to give you a rule which I justify very soon by the end of this class. Okay, and that rule is this: that this level matching condition, if you have R and S, can only be satisfied if you have either, let us see, R plus N S plus. If you don't mind, uh, take this from me for a moment. Uh, we'll 
see it by the end of this class or beginning of our next class in, in detail. Okay? I'm sorry about this. I should have done it in the reverse order. I'm sorry about that. Okay? If you already know this, if in the RNS sector, you already knew that NSO and the other one. What? We already knew from uh, this uh, mutual locality that in the RNS sector. No, this is just some, a statement about one possible sector. When you have, but it's not that if you have something, then something else is not correct. This is not a statement. You see, mutual locality is about one sector. Oh, you're saying this sector with itself? You're, you're looking at mutual locality of this, uh, of this operator with itself? Yeah, basically. Ah, that might, might work. Okay. Let's see. So, uh, what you're saying. Oh, sorry, I mixed up to this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wait, this is just, you know, mutual locality is about mutual locality between two different operators. Here we just talk about one operator. Okay? Uh, I, I explain, I'll try my best to explain this at the end of this class. Okay? Just take it from different form. And I'm really sorry, it's unsatisfying in this way. I should just reverse the order of the presentation. It'll come very soon. Okay? Uh, so, good. But let me, let me, uh, let me assume that if you've got the RNS, I'm telling you, level matching tells you that the only possible allowed sectors are these. Okay. Now, can we have both of these sectors? What was the rule in, uh, uh, by mutual locality? The rule for mutual locality is that if we've got a Ramond sector, okay, um, in the plus and the Ramon sector, the minus, that is mutually non local. See, on the right hand side, this was NSNS. NS. So, so, so there's no phase from right hand side mutual locality. It's purely between R plus and R minus. But R plus and R minus, it's not mutually local because by this rule, both of these alphas were one. One of these f's is plus one, the other is zero. So it will keep your face of mic soon. It will give you an object. Is this clear? So level matching allows only these, these two possibilities. Level matching will not allow both. Okay? So we have to choose one or the other. I'm going to make a, an arbitrary choice and you'll see once what that everything I say will go through the other choices. Okay, so let us suppose we take R plus and S plus. Suppose this is the uh, Ramon sector state, Ramon and uh, RNS state that exists in the spectrum. Okay. Now, what can we say? The first thing that we can say is by taking the OP of uh, operators in this sector with itself. Okay. If we take the OP of operators in this sector and the cell, Ramon with Ramon gives NS. So that tells you that n plus with plus with plus so ns plus ns plus also exists okay uh, great now we know according to our assumption and, and according to modular dynamics there had to be at least one r sector both for the left and for the right. So we've got a spectrum so far that has an R sector on the left, but so far not on the right. Okay, so we have to add in at least one R sector on the right. Okay, so now, the, now we're going to do this. Um, so either there's an NSR sector or an RR sector. Either that 
have to be an NSR sector or an RR sector. Either way, you get an NSR sector. Okay. So there must be an NSR sector. So there must be at least one guy which is NS and R. Okay, clear?
this with this is this, or this with this is this, and so on. Basically, that's how we got these things. Okay, so OPAs don't force us to add anything more to this. Okay, now, uh, now we could ask, you know, can we add? So this satisfies a constraint. Now the next question is, can we add more to this to continue to satisfy the constraints? Always consistent with mutual legality. And the answer is basically, see, for instance, in the, um, let, 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 let's just try um, something random. Suppose I wanted to add another Ramonda one. The only way we can do that, consistent with mutual locality, with the existing Ramon Ramon set, is to make it R minus R minus. Because if you make it R, uh, R plus R plus, right there, if you make it R plus R minus, that will be mutually non local. Because the R plus will be local with the R plus, but the R plus is not local with the R minus. 16 already, if R to 4, each step when you are separating out those proof that this can't be mutually done first. Yeah, we've already we've already basically. I, I, I think the one thing we have for instance checked is that R minus R minus. But that will come if you take that other path, R minus. It it comes here. Yeah, it will come here. We'll, yeah. If you take that path, you'll get it. I agree. It's all, already almost clear. But let me just try one exercise just to convince ourselves to. Suppose I add to this an R minus R minus. I can't add R plus R plus. Because that would kill this. Okay? But if I add an R minus R minus, then uh, what will I have? If I take the OP of this with this, I will get an NS plus R minus, which is mutually non look. We've already checked that. We could have an NS plus R plus and an NS plus R minus. And so on. You can easily convince yourself now that these are complete sets. They satisfy our conditions, and there's nothing more you can add to it that continues to satisfy closure with OP. Okay, so modulo this one thing that I still have to explain to you, and I might get to either this year's next part. For theories that have space time fermions, okay, for theories that have space time fermions, we have already checked that there are only basically two choices. Now, let's look at these two choices in a little more detail. Okay? What's going on here? What's going on here is that on the left hand side we have a Ramon sector and an NS sector. On the right hand side we also have a, 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 a Ramon sector and the NS sector. So, What's going on here firstly is that you have either R plus or NS plus on the left and R plus or NS plus on the right. So you're, set, you're independently choosing a left sector. Uh, you're independently making a choice in the left sector and the right sector. This is the product of this two. You understand? On the left sector, you're saying you're taking the sum of the NS and the and the robot, and in both sectors, projecting to plus for union. And you're doing the same thing on the right. And then whatever you get by putting that on. Something independent on the left, on the right, projecting on plus. Yes. Yes. R and N is always a space Plus minus doesn't matter. Why? Okay, see, where did space time come in? Space time come in come from quantizing the zero modes. The zero modes, now the plus minus will tell you that in the zero modes sector of the two possibilities, you keep only one. Really, it will project onto one chirality of your space. Do you understand? So the vertex operators for the spinner, let's say, let's say the zero guy, like the reverse guy, will be e to the power i 
I plus minus half h1, plus minus half h2, plus minus half h3, and so on. The question of whether you are in the plus or the minus sector is a question of whether whether you've got even chirality or odd Whether the sum of these halves is an even number or an even integer or a half integer. It's chiral, but so either you get positive chirality spin or negative chiral spin, but it, it's getting you to get spins. Okay? Fine. Excellent. This, on, on this side, once again, on the left, you get NS plus or R plus. And on the right, you've got NS plus or R minus. So once again, you're independently doing something on the left and the right. On the left, you're in the NS sector, you're projecting to a plus, and the Roman sector, you're projecting to a plus. On the right, in the NS sector, you're projecting to a plus, and on the uh, uh, Roman sector, you're projecting to the minus. It's like the wild basis. What? It's like the wild basis for left and right changes sign for. Yeah. Now these two theories, exactly. These two theories, are the, the theories that you get by doing these, the, these two things, are what are called Type two, uh, type, in fact, the way we do type two B and type two A, respectively. Which are the other? Oh, the other two are trivial. You see, so the, what are the other two possibilities? The other two are we start with R minus. The important thing is not whether you got minus or not. It's whether it's the same or different. You see, because in the Ramon sector, the choice of fermion number. It's just, as we just discussed, it's a choice of whether you're keeping left movers or right movers for your spins. Okay? There will be no physical difference between those other two possibilities. It's just, the, the, the real difference is whether this and this are different or not. Yeah, even if you want, you can look at those other two possibilities. But they are identical to these two possibilities. The space-time formulas in this and this will be different and... Uh... The chiralities. So, one, exactly. So, uh, <coughs> we'll study this again in, in, in detail. But uh, uh, one of them will be uh, a chiral theory, yeah. and the other will be a non chiral theory. Okay. So, this one will be the chiral theory. This one will be the non chiral Because something from here, from one side, and the other. You see, the plus makes a choice of positive chiral. The minus makes a choice of negative pattern. And this one will have both. Well, this one will have only both. Come. Okay. Type 2B is a chiral theory. So there's a normally cancellation that we need to worry about. Whereas type 2A is not. Okay. Great. Um, okay. Uh, any questions or comments about this? I have to get back to this, which, which we can get into. So that is A and this is B. This one, the chiral one is B. This is B. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Now let's move on to the case where we made this assumption that there was at least one RNS. Okay. Let us suppose there's no RNS. Then there has to be an R R set. Because there has to be at least one Ramon on the left and on the right, and the only way you can have that is you got an RR set. Okay, so now suppose, so now we are starting with a new, new possibility. Chat, for some reason I have to go to the colloquium today, so five minutes will be done to stop. Let's see. So, suppose we have a theory in which there is no R. We've got, some, we've got an RR, uh, we've got an RR for you. Now, let's see. Um, see, if you've got an RR, you could have an R plus, R plus. Or you could have This is 
one consistent uh, combination. You could have only one of them, or you could have this and this. This and this is mutually open. Or you could have R plus R minus and R minus R plus. This is also mutually open. Or you could have only one of these. So the R plus R minus contraction is not mutually open, right? What? R plus R minus is not, but R plus R minus is also oh, so <laughs> the two things can see. Uh, okay, now one combination that is consistent with OP and uh, um, and everything else is NS NS plus NS plus with R. Let's for instance R plus R plus. By the way, if you have an R minus R minus, no, that's fine. Yeah. So or with R is with anything. NS plus, NS plus, and R's with anything, plus, minus, whatever, would be would, would be uh, mutually local and would be closed under OP. Okay? But, uh, uh, so one should keep this in mind, but it's impossible to build modular variant partition functions um, of this sort. Because we will see very, uh, we've already actually seen, if you, if you remember, there were only two modular variants. Um, uh, the two modular invariant. Okay, you, you remember that, that there, were, there were two modular invariant partition functions. One which was a sum of three terms. One which was a sum of one term by itself. The plus plus torus partition function was modular invariant, and a particular linear combination of plus 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 minus and minus plus was modular invariant. Okay, and. Uh, 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 you, you can't get this sector by combining those things. I, I'm going to show this to you very soon. So this would be this would be invariant by itself under the rules that we talked about. So you should keep it as a possibility, but we won't be able to get this to be modular. Will not be. Okay? You need to add some more. Now what more can you add? We must, there's no NSR. Okay, so it's either NSNS or RR. Okay, so let's suppose we add one more RR thing. Suppose we have this, so the only other thing we could add is R minus R minus by mutual locality. Okay, but the OP of this with this will give us an NS minus NS minus. Because this with this is that. Okay, and uh, this is this is just totally fine. There's no mutual locality problem between anything with both NSs and anything else. The only possible mutual locality problem is here, which is fine. Uh, this with this is OP. This this with this is OP. This yeah, I thought kill this. This is one possible set. That at least is a possibility. Okay. What else could you? Something else you can do is to add to this uh, add to the green set. Yeah, you could add, let's say, an R plus, sorry, R and yeah, so you could have started here with it. So you could have started now with an NS plus. Plus, by the way, NS plus, NS plus is always like that. Because whatever sector you have, OP of that with itself is always NS plus, NS plus. So NS plus, NS plus, you could have started with that same R plus, R minus. Suppose that was our starting point. Then we would have added an R minus, R plus. That's the only thing that's mutually local with this. Okay. But then doing the OP of this with this, to give us an NS minus Okay? This is also nice and completely uh, closed within itself. It's nice and completely closed within itself. Okay? And as we will check explicitly, both these possibilities lead to modular. Yeah, this. 
Systematic as I should have been. But if you believe, believe everything I said, basically the place I've not been systematic is in not yet establishing this. That, that thing that um, if you have a Roman sector, it can only go with an NS plus. Level matching demands that goes with an NS plus. Okay, this, this will be the first thing we talk about next class. Okay, once, once, once we do that, we completely establish. But we've already, uh, already modular one fact shown that there are four. Possibly consistent, and the second thing I've not shown systematically is that keeping just this and this will not lead to a body line very body. That's two minutes actually, that's very simple. Okay, both these I'll show you in great detail next class. Okay, but with making these two assumptions, we've already shown that there are essentially four solutions to the problem of finding a consistent world shape superstring. Okay, this is type 2a, type 2b. Type 0 A, type 0 A. Now, <coughs> again, the same algebra that shows that looks at the coasts and looks at the you know, physical state conditions and uh, uh, level matching and so on. Uh, something that you will, um, that uh, you will, that I will show you next class, is that the tachyon, that the superstring theory continues to have a tachyon. But that tachyon lies in the NS minus sector. The tachyon is NS minus NS minus. Okay? Now, the great thing about these two theories is that they do not include the NS minus NS minus. So you project out the tachyon. So, retain the tachyon. Okay? These two theories will turn out to be space time supersymmetric. Explaining the lack of a tachyon. Tachyons are not consistent. These two theories will turn out to be space time non supersymmetric. And indeed, as you see, they're theories without fermions, without space time fermions. And they will be super conversions of the bosonic stream. Continue to be tachyonic. Unstable, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So, this is some very elegant construction of something that's about as useless as the bosonic tree. It may turn out to have some use later on. You, know, you never know. You never know what. You've got a theoretical construction, you never know where. But so far, it's proved essentially, essentially useless. But these two theories define completely well defined spring perturbation theory, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, are the first. Real theories we're studying in this course. That, that, that by which I mean the first theories which are consistent completely in a in in animal sense. Okay? And now we're going to complete this discussion next class. So the things we're going to discuss are the following. First, we're going to actually compute the world sheet partition functions of these of these theories, check that they're modular and invariant, and uh, uh, confirm that these other possibilities were not. Okay. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is to look at the coast sectors. The coasts, and then also look at the physical state equations. And uh, clear up all the uh, uh, all the odds and ends that we haven't touched on in this class. Okay? Uh, any questions or comments? Very silly. Please uh, what was the 0 a 0 b 2 a 2 b was that a 1 a which was there's a type 1 theory which is obtained by oh, yeah. uh, uh, orientifold projecting the type uh, 2 the type 2 b theory ok but uh, I think though the 2 1 and 0 refer to number of super symmetries type 2 theory has 32 super symmetries which is the language of equals of Yangle's theory has twice, okay, it has twice
twice as much as the minimum amount of supersymmetry needed in 10 dimensions. You know, the minimal supersymmetry algebra are 10 dimensions, uh, which includes a gravity, uh, gravity multiplet, possibly even, yeah, I think even without that even without the human, even the animals here, the minimum amount of supersymmetry in 10 dimensions has 16 supercharges. Two refers to the fact that this has twice as much supersymmetry. Okay? Type 1 theory will be some, uh, a theory which you start with this type 2 theory and then orient to project much in the way we did for the Rosan extreme. And that will kill one of the supersymmetries. Type 0 theory for Fermo is never supersymmetric to start. I think that is the reason for the Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, so uh, in the next class we will complete we will complete our discussion. We'll complete our standard chapter 10 in Pritchinsky and we'll clear up all the